can hear me? Hi, I'm Greg. Uh, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yay! Yay! Yes! Happy Mother's Day to mothers are a very special thing in, uh, in the world and in everyone's life. And uh, I wanted a special shout out to my wife, Rachel, the mother of my children. Hey, I told you I was going to. <laughs> Um, okay, so I am going to get warmed up, because it's been a while since I've talked, and today we are going to talk about the first part of my three-part series entitled Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Today is everything. So, we're going to spend a lot of, or at least some of this session talking, kind of laying groundwork, laying foundational things. Um, the one of the first points is the that I want to get through is the limitations of language, the inherent um, insufficiency of. I'd rather talk loud. Okay, let's sit for a second. The the insufficiency of. You know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna work this out. Hello. 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 Yeah, still good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the insufficiency of language to fully capture the concepts and ideas that we we exist within. And, and so when I essentially I'm saying when I say God and you want to think source, think source. Think what resonates with you. Think what um, what works and is, allows you to incorporate the ideas within the framework of your own reality without, without, um, I guess, rejecting them based on the, the concepts being discordant with your own. Take, take what you can and leave the rest. Um, so, uh, as far as like assumptions go, I'm going to speak very matter-of-factly. I'm going to speak as if I know, as if I am the knower. Um, that, is, that is because I have to. Uh, and, and it's based on my own interpretations of both literature I have read and my own personal experiences. And, and so my, my story is my own, and please uh, add to your story as you see fit. Um, so essentially, anything that you can get a positive, uh, a positive boost from in the things that I say, integrate that, and when I am droning on and on about something that doesn't really work, just smile and um, get through it. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. My, my purpose in being here and giving the talks is twofold. Um, number one, I selfishly want to deliver the words that are burning inside of me that I feel the need to get out. Uh, number two is that I very much want to deliver the words that someone here or someone watching or someone at some time can use to further the path of their own ascension, their own consciousness, their own um, furthering of their being and their understanding of themselves, selves with a capital S. Um, and so hopefully those two will be the same thing. <laughs> uh, but you let me know. All right. Um, Next, uh, there is uh, there is no place, there is no where, there is no like thing or state of consciousness or or um, understanding or idea that I mention that is not yours, that you cannot hold, that you cannot be. Uh, I am I am nothing special, but that's kind of what makes me special. And same goes for all of you in that, in that we are all kind of one and all have the same inherent capabilities being a, a, a child of God, so to speak. Um, and, and so if ever I, I say something or describe something and people are like, oh, I couldn't do that, let go and release that thought because you absolutely and always can and always have been able to and will in the future, right? Um, you are all divine uh, and and can act accordingly, <laughs> if you so choose. Um, okay. So, uh, some of the works, some of the works that I'm going to be referencing, uh, four agreements I've, I've enjoyed recently, um, and I can sum up some of these, but, but I think I will touch on them more over the, the course of our talks. 
Um, the Four Agreements was really nice. The Hermetica, Kabbalion, I'm going to hit a lot of Hermetic principles, um, where everything is mind, all is energy, um, polarity, gender, all of, the, all of that type of stuff. Um, we're going to work a little bit in that framework. I recently read The Celestine Prophecy, and that is a, an excellent uh, picture of uh, the ascension and the pinnacle of human consciousness, the, the ascension of, of the human race. Did you read the other four? I haven't read the other four. I, I, I definitely want to. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on, on quantum mechanics and uh, general relativity and the integration thereof, uh, kind of what they would consider the, the theory of everything is how can you explain and reconcile the behavioral differences of, of matter um, within both of those because the, the um, general relativity explains kind of balls rolling down a hill and our solar system um, but is inadequate in explaining the movement of like galaxies and the universe itself and the things very very small uh, and so that's kind of been the the pinnacle of scientific uh, advancement is trying to get it all to fit nicely into their little box. Uh, and so we're going to touch on that So, Oh, also, I mean, I have a fairly decent framework, or at least decent um, understanding of the Bible. Right? Um, I was raised pretty, pretty strongly Christian, and so a lot of what I do both fits unity um, because of my ability to talk, talk in, in Christian terms um, and my own, my own upbringing. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about like Gnostic texts, uh, something like uh, the most common examples would be like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary, things that uh, haven't been included in the canonical Bible um, for a myriad of reasons, most notably the Council of Trent, uh, when they just kind of decided what Christianity was and everyone got it, got on board or got, you know, I'm going to talk about a bunch of cultural things, or try to. I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but like we're going to we're going to do some stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about like a bunch of cultural things, like for example, Frozen Two. Uh, a lot of the the symbolism and a lot of uh, mainstream media echoes, uh, or at least reflects a lot of the ideas that I'm going to discuss here. And, and we can talk about why and how, and how that makes sense and makes perfect sense. Uh, with society being a reflection of uh, the people within that society. Uh, and so I don't think I'm going to touch much on cultural stuff today, maybe a little bit, um, but it'll be more of a tomorrow thing. And uh, the namesake of this this talk, everything, everywhere. Hmm? Next Sunday. Next. Ne well, so, yeah, <laughs> next Sunday fall. is <laughs> everywhere. This Sunday is every everything. Uh, and then the following Sunday on the 28th is all at once. So um, as part of the three-parter, and that's kind of where I'm, the, one of the, the recent movies. And, and in fact, if you want a head start on uh, next week's talk more, I recommend going out and watching everything everywhere all at once. It's one of the greatest films that I've ever seen and kind of perfectly encapsulates a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today. It's one of those same cries for attention put out by a society trying to advance the consciousness of all who see what someone creates, right? Is that in the theaters now? Oh, no. Um, uh, if you need, I, I recommend um, um, file, I'm sailing the high seas uh, to watch it <laughs> if you don't want to spend money. And if you need a link then or a way to access that, I can certainly make it available to anyone with internet access for no money. Yep. Uh, cool. Um, so then, that out of the way, uh, I'm doing a three-parter entitled Everything Everywhere All at Once. Each week I'm going to be expanding, I'm going to be furthering the concepts. Ideally I'm going to bring up kind of these concepts this week, uh, build upon all of them next week, and continue to build, maybe even culminate uh, on week three. Um, so I, I don't know what's going to happen, but like we're going to we're going to go places. So it's going to be exciting, I think. Uh, each one of my talks is going to follow the same kind of general roadmap. Uh, so 
uh, for everything, everywhere, all at once. We're going to talk about like triads. Uh, triads are really common in, in spirituality and met metaphysicality and uh, in, in, in symbolism, right? Like the past, the present, and the future, uh, body, mind, and soul, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to invite a lot of audience participation, but like, can this is one of them. Uh, can uh, the Jewish triangle? Yeah. Uh, yes, great. Uh, does anyone have any examples of other triads they've seen in any aspect of their, you know, of their reality of their readings? Okay. <laughs> Everything in nature shows it. Yes, yes. So, so triads are triads are very symbolically important. I'm also going to talk, uh, or at least attempt to help people visualize uh, all of the different dimensions that we exist within, uh, because that type of perspective can be immensely valuable in understanding both where you are in nature, both where you are in time and, and in reality, and like your place in the universe can, can be um, put into a little bit better perspective. I uh, will also uh, talk a lot about the, the connections between human culture and human consciousness and human culture, human evolution, and like what you see in the present day. Now that's a little bit more of, of next week's talk, um, but we're going to lay the foundations to get there today. Um, what, uh, yes, so, so cultural cultural kind of calls to to see the next stage of our human evolution. Uh, I'm going to attempt to talk a little bit about uh, multiple realities, about visualizing your own life as a, a branching path within a tapestry of time, uh, where, where you, you are not, time is not linear and you're not locked in, and the things that you do or don't do uh, both matter. Uh, let's see, I'm going to talk about uh, all of the actions that we take, the way we live our lives. I'm going to talk about everything we do everywhere all at once and the consequences uh, thereof. How, how there, there is no accidents, there are uh, no mistakes, There's, there is only you and what you do. And uh, finally, I'm, I'm going to try to, so my intention for, for this talk a little bit um, is for everyone who wants to ascend, for everyone that wants to take mindful control over your own ascension, uh, to find the tools to do so from the, from the words that I speak, and uh, be given the tools to find eternity, find peace within your lives, and therefore find the, tool, the tools to uh, consciously take control of your creation of your own reality in which, in which you will in, inhabit. Um, and so, yes, call to action. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about raising your limitations, like removing your limitations, raising your baseline frequency at which you vibrate, raising your baseline level of consciousness, um, and uh, kind of taking command and control of your own reality day by day because the the shift the ascension um, of human consciousness is happening now and, and even just by the virtue of you being here you are a part of it um, so no, namaste for that and, and without further ado we come to the beginning uh, everything <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I gotta juice up, you know. Yeah, like Refill, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so these uh, are, are some triads that I enjoyed exploring in the um, development of this talk. Um, uh, history, body, solid, the id, if you are a, a Freudian guy, uh, which I am not. Yeah, uh, <laughs> physical reality, uh, the word, uh, and then like kind of the base, the lower dimensions. So, in the beginning, there was no thing. There was no where. There was just one thing. It was it was a dot, and then uh, something happened. Right, and that changed everything when something happened. Uh, suddenly, one thing became two, became four, became eight. 16, 32, 64, and, and we they probably, if you could have been around to hear it and there was stuff, it probably would have made a big bang. You know, and we're like, whoa, it's 
That's right. Uh, as, as reality and as everything suddenly expand to, to pretty big size, but also from outside, uh, there is no size. And so only within itself could even the relationship of size exist. Either way, lots of stuff happened all in one tiny little area that grew to one big area. And it expanded and it expanded and it expanded. Uh, and, and eventually, you know, we showed up, right? And that's the story of everything, the story of history. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, and okay, so I'm not there yet. <laughs> Don't know spoilers. I imagine, imagine yourself sitting around a campfire in a cave. There's not even writing, you know, we, we tell stories to each other. And so that, that would be a story that I would tell to other people to explain why we're here. And some of them sounded differently than others. Some stories talk about a big dragon got split in half and that created the heavens and the earth. Some of them talk about God creating the earth in seven days and, and just thinking it into being and then naming all of the things. There are creation stories. And what makes any of them wrong, I guess, is the point. The, the point is what would, if we were around a campfire, how would you interpret my story? What would, what would it be for you? It would be your whole world. It would be what you would tell your children. It would be what your children would tell their children with slight differences. What would the story of everything, the story of creation, of our creation be after 6,000 years of a game of telephone? We don't know. They did, they did their best. Everyone that came before us was just doing their best and were standing upon the reality that they created. Um, and so like for you guys, being an audience sitting around a campfire in a cave, what, what would you understand from the story when, when all that existed was the story? In the beginning, there was only the word. Uh, and, and what came out of the mouth of those who spoke was the same thing that came out of the mouth of God because they were speaking and they were creating their own reality by telling stories to explain what came before so that they could survive with an understanding of how they got to where they are right now. Um, the point being from the Big Bang uh, is we all came from the same oneness. We all came from that energy congealing into space, making stars, stars blowing up, turning cooler and cooler and cooler um, until they formed planets, until they formed elements, until they formed everything that we know today. And so I, I have a nice graphic uh, about all of human history, uh, and animal history, and planet history, and solar system history, and, and the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and, and all the way back to the beginning of all things. Um, and so we are, it's, it is the same, the inside and the outside of the spiral. It's not like the universe was created and then we were put into it from somewhere external. We, we are all the same stuff and have always been the same stuff. Uh, uh, from the very instant, uh, the very moment of creation. That's a pretty easy way uh, to, to, to conceptualize being one with God. Because if you, if you think about all that is or all that ever will be was God, and then God kind of expanded, uh, and, and you live within that expansion, you experience within that expansion, of course you're God, because how could you not be? How could you not be? How could there be separation while, while you live within um, this? All of that separation is uh, an illusion of separation. Um, all of human history, all of evolution, all of this star stuff uh, continually cooling and continually solidifying and slowing down and getting uh, more 
tangible, okay, uh, as, as uh, we slow down, we, we get more physical. No, we're, we're the same stuff, but we, we provide ourselves the illusion of solidity, the illusion of, uh, of separation from the energy that all, all that is is energy, and so we must be that same energy kind of tricking ourselves into thinking we are something different. Uh, we trend towards uh, complex, complex uh, complexity. Yeah, complexity. Hmm. We trend towards complexity. All, all of all of reality, all of history, all of existence has been a slow, steady march towards more things. More, <laughs> yeah, towards more things. Uh, we want more and more and more. We want th things begot, things began much more complex. We, as a part of all that is, as a part of God, as a part of the universe, we are subjectively experiencing ourselves. The, the observer is also the observed, and uh, our subjectivity, our the, the mere act of our observation is what creates change in the world around us. That's a very, that's a very quantum phys or, or like the, the, the thought experience or the, the actual light slit experience. Like when you, when you talk about quantum mechanics, um, the act of observation changes the outcome, right? And that is relative to the act of when you look at an atom you you can you changed the result and when you look at reality around you you have changed the result based on all of the ways that you interact that you you can't you can't put energy out and not affect change uh and so the, the more we're going to follow slowly I, I try not to get too far ahead of myself um so I, i'm going to continually bring back to to the past, you know, bring back to history, um, because we're going to build upon all of these, all of these ideas the next time. Um, so, um, essentially, time. One of the one of the triads I really liked: uh, solid, liquid, and gas. You know, the 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 early where 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 we are slow we are physical uh, we're, we're one of the we're talking about our bodies you know our physical bodies we're talking about uh, the atoms that make up none of this is this related to or it's all the same stuff like it when ice turns into a liquid it's still water the whole time when that turns into a gas it's all water we and the energy that makes ourselves up from our body to our mind to our spirit, it's all water in that way, where, where you may change the form, but the underlying nature of yourself with a capital S remains the same. Um, so let's see, more on evolution type stuff. Um, when there were, monkeys and lizards and, and fish and before then single-celled creatures and, and all of history went, went kind of that direction but in reverse. We, we moved forward through time uh, and continually became more, more complex as our brains developed. Our brains being the, the tools that our physical forms use to, to experience, to connect with our five senses because the fish and the single-celled creatures didn't connect with their environment in the same way that we are capable of. As, as we have continually, as all has continually complexified, so has our ability to gather information subjectively, subjectively, right? As we, and by we, I mean all of life, uh, has has just gotten better and better and better at experiencing itself uh, until man. That's kind of the point. We humankind ha have become the pinnacle of consciousness. Have become the way that the universe can know itself. Before before 
now, the universe was unable to know itself. It was able to be and to live, but the alligator eating the fish in the pond does not know itself in the same way that human consciousness and hum humanity has been able to know itself. That's been the goal of all of history, of all of, of the, the increasing spiral, the ever-increasing spiral of life. It, um, so, where do I go from here? We are, and what I would argue with, um, we can talk a little bit about those that came before us uh, as we stand on, stand on the reality that was built by our predecessors. And when I say predecessors, I don't mean like the 1900s. Uh, I mean, I mean, way back, uh, biblical times, well, well before biblical times, um, when when the earth was void and formless, you know, when, when uh, there weren't names for things. All, all of this um, has been leading towards our ability to reconnect with with God, with Source, uh, and what I would argue uh both both gnostically and biblically um we we as as humanity uh kind of reached a pinnacle of consciousness in in jesus the christ in or or the idea of jesus christ because because it's not it's not important what is important is the symbol what is important is the idea that um we can transcend our physical form and become one with spirit, become one with energy, and thereby attain eternal life, salvation, immortality, um, whatever you want to call it, um, by, by following the example of the Son of God or the Son of Man or, or what, what have you, some sort, of a, some sort of example. And that was 2,000 years ago, so like, we're ready now. I mean, if we haven't started listening, then we, 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 it's time now to start following along with, uh, with the program. Is there anything but eternal life? Repeat. Is there anything but eternal life? And so the, the idea uh, of that is, no, uh, you know, if we, if we talk about energy not being created or, or destroyed and, and all we are now, I would... I would talk a little bit uh, about, now this is getting, this is actually getting pretty far ahead of, of where I was going. Um, no, it's okay. Um, consciousness has a choice to be preserved or destroyed. Life does not. Uh, so energy isn't going anywhere, but what you makes, what makes you, you uh, is, is something that you have to seize or, or, uh, or else if you don't seize it and you don't know who you are how can you know who you are um, so okay uh so you know jesus christ uh and, and now where where we are now and our, our current culmination we are on the circumference of time the edge of time that's what the now is again i'm getting ahead of myself um but uh but like we're going to talk a little bit in, in the future stuff about like ai and what the singularity looks like and and i'm going to tell you what's coming uh, and it's coming fast, and it's coming whether you want it to show up or not. Uh, and everything is going to change, just like everything changes now, but everything is going to change fast. Okay, uh, next, next uh, is we're going to talk a little bit about dimensionality. So, this is the first, second, third, and fourth dimensions. We're being able to... Uh, uh, hold these and this idea in your brain will really, really help uh, when we talk about the higher stuff. Um, so first dimension is a line. Um, two points. You know, in the beginning there was nothing. Or there was all things, and no thing is the same thing. Um, one, one point. And, and then there were suddenly two. Uh, two points. That is the first dimension. The second point is a, the second dimension is a square. Now there is an up and a side, up and down and a side to side. 
And then the third dimension, uh, physicality. Yay, a lot of stuff is much more possible when there is now an X, Y, and a Z axis, because now there's space that, that, that you can be in. Yes, uh, that, was, that was a big deal. Um, now, when you view uh, the third dimension from top down, um, what, what could it look like? What does a sphere look like when you draw it on a piece of paper? It looks like a circle. So the second dimension, when viewed well, from above, when, whatever dimension, when viewed from above, simplifies to one below it. So it's easier to, it, the easiest thing to keep in mind that I know of is a sphere in, on, on a piece of paper looks like a circle. Um, okay, so third dimension. We got this stuff. That's great. Now we can like build. Um, but if there was um, no change, because that is a static image, and so nothing can happen in the third dimension. Only by only from the fourth dimension, uh, the can can there be movement? Can there be motion? Can there be change? The fourth dimension is time. Time is the liquid that the third dimension is floating on and moving that allows for the expenditure of energy. That is the congealing of energy itself is our fourth dimension. This is where we are. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was, <clears throat> when I took trig in college, they taught us uh, three-dimensional tic-tac-toe mm. with the uh, formulas. But as you say, really, it's four dimensions. Yes, all that we, all that we exist within, physically, all that we exist within is fourth dimensional reality. Is is atoms moving? Uh, is all things moving? Is everything um, changing and getting more complex? So, like, you think you're stable, still here, sitting at a table? The Earth is spinning. The Earth is rotating around the sun. The sun is spinning, the sun is rotating. We're going fast right now. Uh, and we're going fast as kind of, if you threw a handful of dirt into a, a moving river, uh, a, lot of, a lot of it will sink, but some of the solid matter will float on top as it, as it exists, clumps together and, and floats on top. That, in that same way, um, all of the matter, like the earth and everything, is floating on the surface of time, uh, is, is moving on the surface of time as it flows like a river. Uh, okay, so, it's a little, uh, okay, a, a spoiler as well of what we're going to talk about. Um, general relativity in that, in that same way, a, a lot of people have probably seen that um, depiction of space-time where it looks like you dropped a, a ball bearing onto a cloth and it's things that are heavy fall down. That, that's, that is the same, that's the same conception, that's the same visualization of the fifth dimension on the fourth. That, that fabric that you would consider the bowling ball weighing down so heavy is, is time itself. That's space-time, uh, with there being no real separation necessarily between time and space because one could not exist without the other. Um, we will... At the movement that you make is what allows you to exist. Okay. Um, that this is all again groundwork framework stuff because uh, we're going to get into the more more fun aspects uh when we start talking about the fifth and sixth dimension and everything like that um and start going 90 degrees up from from all of this and then again and trying to describe things like that but we need we will we need we need an understanding of where we were to be able to get to where we are to be able to get to where we are going all right, so this 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 is the boring day. <laughs> okay, um, uh, just a, just a couple uh, uh, of my uh, thoughts while I was doing this uh, statements that I, I 
won't probably expand upon too much. Uh, everything exists because it was built by things that came before. And I say, when I say everything, I mean everything with the capital E. Everything that you can conceivably think of was put in place and, and built by someone that came before us. And, and someone could be some consciousness, could be some energy, could be some force. That doesn't matter. What matters is that we are a continual complexification uh, of, of congealing energy. Um, let's see. Everything that will exist is built by us in the now. Just like we are built upon a foundation, and right here we have, at the end, during the now, we have the ability to affect change on that around us, which then carries through and is built, uh, built to be lived within in the future by us now, which is what makes now so important, but again, that's next week. Um, okay, we're all just congealed energy, experiencing ourself, uh, we're getting more complex, everything is changing, there is... Uh, you know, like all, all of this is kind of foundational, foundational understandings for, for knowing who you are. So why does it matter? Why does any of this stuff matter? Yes. Thank, thank you, Sue. I thank you for chuckling. Thank you. <laughs> that was my goal. Uh, okay, so with us being separate, uh, or at least experiencing the illusion of separation of Maya, of, of uh, the smoke that um, separates us from the underlying true nature of reality being the congealed energy that we're all swimming within. Um, the point is your perception, your perspective is your own. Uh, you, you don't have anyone else's perspective. The point of you being you is to experience you things, not to experience me things or any other person's things. And once you take control and command of your own perspective, because it can be hijacked, once you take control of your own perspective, you will be able to direct the reality that you want to live in. Uh, all of your physical momentum uh, the habits that you have formed over the course of your entire life. So, you know, we, we saw the momentum that carried us all the way to here in terms of solar systems and then planets and then single cell creatures and fish and reptiles and mammals and man and man, 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 and Jesus Christ and man, 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 and then you, right? You are carrying the weight of the entire history, uh, the momentum of the entirety of the universe is behind your subject, subjective experience of reality right at this present moment. You, you carry the universe with you. Yes, it is heavy. Um, oh yeah, so, so uh, okay, since I'm here, um, how do you deal with that pressure? Because <laughs> it's all there. Uh, you use it to crystallize. You use it to uh, flow through you and carry you along. Trying to swim against the river of time is going to be exhausting. But flowing with it and accepting and understanding that uh, you, you, are, you are given the gift of all of that history to use and to do with what you will rather than uh, the burden of history. Um, so let's see the a little so this is a little bit of laying uh, some of the the groundwork for for next week's talk. Uh, so you, physically your body is here. Your thoughts can be anywhere. Your thoughts are less congealed than your body. They are lighter. They are unburdened by physical form, uh, and therefore, what is really neat is, is as we drift through the river of time, our bodies are slowed, because our bodies are slow, our bodies are heavy, and our thoughts are not. We physically can be at one point in time, and that point in time is now. Our thoughts can be anywhere can be any time because they are not physical. You can think about the past, you can think about the future, you can think about the now, which is really cool, um, 
and that, that sort of convergence. And the future is neat too, but the point of it is, is thoughts come next. Before we had thoughts, we were nothing but animals. But now that we have thoughts, we have been able to transcend the physical reality and think about time from above. And when you can think about your timeline from past to present to future, uh, you are able to direct yourself. You are able to direct your experience. You are able to direct your thoughts towards a future that you choose, which is cool. Um, there is no separation. I didn't have a lot for this because I talked about it a whole bunch. Um, we, the, the understanding, I guess the importance of that, if you say that up to yourself every day, you're going to build up the habit. You're going to build up the, the, the momentum. Uh, your thoughts, the same way as your body, carry the weight. Now, it's not the same weight that your body feels when you, when you eat a cheesecake every day, you know, um, but in the same way, your body would get slower, and if you think thoughts about eating a cheesecake every day, maybe your thoughts are gonna get slower. As you, the point being, you're, you're, if you think bad thoughts, you will get slower. Bad. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Think if you think slow thoughts, thoughts if you think lower vibrational thoughts, if you tell yourself you're dumb and slow and weak and bad, you're going to dig that rut for your thoughts the same way as if you did not move every day, you're going to dig that rut for your body. Uh, the, there is no separation between your mental reality and your physical reality and your spiritual reality, no spoilers. Um, okay, so uh, the, the point here we're getting to the point. Um, clean up your room. <laughs> everything you do, everything you do, every instant of your physical being carries weight. Uh, when you do one push-up, that carries weight. When you walk down the street, that carries weight. It carries the momentum to the now of all that has come before. So, Don Miguel Ruiz would say, be impeccable. Because you will live in the reality that you create today. When you shove someone over, you are living in the reality in which you shoved someone over and took their candy. Uh, if you lift someone up and make them feel better, you now live in the reality where that person is healed. That person feels better. That person gets to carry the positivity with them gets to integrate that into themselves, into their body. You, everything you do should be for the future, for the now, in the now. Everything, everything matters, which is why it matters. Um, everything you do conversely has a cost. If you create pain, if you create suffering, if you creates sadness. If you hit someone and hurt someone, those things have a cost. So be impeccable with all that you do. Be impeccable with the word. Your, your body, your living your own story. You're living your word. What will it be at the end? Um, and so, so think about it. <laughs> be it. Live it. Uh, everything you do has an effect, so be impeccable. Every oh, there's 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 no separation. Everything you see is your own, is a reflection of the physical stuff that has brought you here. Everything you see is you. Um, we have we have gotten to the way time works here. Um, We've just gotten, as we've gotten more complex, we've gotten faster and faster and faster. Time is speeding up. Ge ge geologically, you know, solar system size, all the way down to now, our consciousness is speeding up. We started, we started real slow as a solid, and then you turn to a liquid, and then you turn to a gas, but also, also the speed at 
the speed at which our bodies go, we hit a while ago. Uh, our consciousness uh, we have, is how we transcended the speed limit, the speed limit of our physical bodies um, is kind of bounded by the speed of light. The speed of light being where, where particles turn into waves. The speed of light being where matter turns into energy. Our matter can't go that fast, but our energy can. And being able to being able to recognize where you are within within the flow of time gives you the power to transcend it again. I am struggling to stay in the history part of things and not talk about mental stuff. Um, okay. So, so let go. Yes, does anyone have any questions? I was just recently thinking. I was just recently struck with the words pay attention. So in the realm of all that you've shared, <clears throat> having this vortex or this package of the me that's existing in this body at this time and space or in this life, that whole thing about what you do has an effect, that you're paying, you're, you're actually using that energy to and spending it, how you choose to direct that for that effect. So somehow those words struck me as a different way of seeing that. Yes, thank you. That gives me uh, several more minutes to talk. Uh, <laughs> so, so while we're talking about the surface of time, while we're talking about experiencing the time that we're living in, um, all of that requires energy. The faster you go, the higher you get. Uh, just like um, pretend a, a jet ski is sinking into a lake and, and it's underwater. As, as you physically or mentally give yourself gas, you rev it up, it lifts to the surface. Um, it, it, it raises its vibration, it raises its energy expenditure, uh, and can therefore not, will not sink under the surface of time. When, when energy stops being expended, when, when you stop moving, you start dying. You start sinking. That's the that's the the end for you. When when things stop having energy, you fall beneath the surface of time. Now consciousness can do that if it so chooses. Consciousness, I mean, God can do anything. Um, but but generally speaking, you don't have to. I mean, you always get the, the choice. Um, but like when I say a, a rock, a rock is in time because of its stored energy. We are in time because of our stored energy, but what we get to do is, is direct our own experience through time. Um, moving, moving, I guess, forward, or rather, all right. How do you pay attention? Okay, yes. Your, your, Energy, she asked, how do you pay attention? Because you can direct your energy on the threads of time uh, as they move through you, you can add that energy to it. And that is what creates the reflection of your reality around you is by adding your energy to these externalities. Yes. So when she said to pay attention, Spend energy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the, what the goal is is to be a a conduit. Now you're you you are made up of energy, kind of like a battery, because we're all just energy floating together. Um, the the lie is that you are finite. The lie of energy is that you are finite in any way. So when you feel like you're expending energy on others or on things and that you are getting drained or, or something is lessened uh, about you in any way, and so you must jealously guard your energy to avoid giving it away, is a lie. You have within you the, the tap 
the wellspring of the connection to divine, the connection to source, the connection to all there is, to everything that you can. Uh, so Celestine Prophecy said it really well. Um, as you channel that energy, the faster you spread love to those around you, the faster you spread love and, and are a conduit for love, the more you open the, the floodgates, the more you are refilled. Uh, and you cannot run dry. And uh, almost all of, again, Celestine, uh, human conflict, human, um, human suffering has come from the, the misconception that, that we are not eternal, that, that the wellspring is not eternal as you try to capture the energy of others. Is it fair to say, clean up your room, pay attention, be impeccable, let go, these are all ways of practicing? Oh, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so they, those, are, those are the, uh, the consequences, you know? Um, if you don't clean up your room, your environment uh, gets messy. Uh, and that works, that works on all three levels, you know? Uh, if you don't clean up your room mentally, your environment gets messy. Uh, clean up your room physically because if where you are and the earth that you live in is uh, a reflection of yourself, you want yourself to look nice. And now, clean up your room is limiting, I suppose. Uh, it's much more about loving and liking where you are because you have the ability to change it. If you feel bad because your room is messy and dirty, clean up your room. If you love it, don't, right? It, you, you, you want to, in every present moment on the surface of time, in the now, you want to dwell in, a, in, in the frequency of love. You want, you want to resonate with the, the love that all things around you are emanating at all times. Love being like the that the mind, energy, source, God, all of this stuff. The energy that you channel uh, is as easily described um, as as love to to affect this sort of change. Um, paying attention is just amplifying. So like when you yeah five, five minutes you got it. Um, so paying attention is is really feeling love for things. Now, I'm not saying that everyone that pays attention to things feels love. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can, though. <laughs> you, you, you can choose to feel love, and that's what pours energy into things. When you, when you do feel things that are not positive, when you feel things that are, are selfish or are negative, you are, generally speaking, attempting to capture that energy for yourself. You are, you are attempting to take that energy, uh, or at least diminish it to make yourself feel better. It's all, it's all just a lie. Uh, anything that is, is not, anything that is not rising is, is something that doesn't need to be followed. Um, look for impeccability in in all that you do um all of the momentum of the past can be let go we're, we're getting we're, we're approaching the next everywhere so like that's next week is is we're going to we're going to talk a lot about um the the surface living in the now uh and so so what this was was kind of what brought us here um Pretty sloppily where we have been. What's uh, we must understand our history. You must know yourself in all of your like the past because the, the, the past is something that must be held on to or let go, it, however you so choose, um, or else you can't fully live in the now. And if you can't live in the now, you can't plan for the future. And, and if you're if you're living in things in stuff, you are trapped. 
let go of the things, let go of everything. And that is where I'll end it. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. I'll, so I will, I will, oh, uh, love offerings are in the back. Um, I have time for everyone. If anyone wants to, uh, I, I, if anyone wants to talk about any concept, I'm interested all the time. Here, if you see me, you can have my number and call me. Uh, I also hang out at the store a lot, and you can just come in and be like, so you were talking about, like, time? And I'll, <laughs> I'll go, yeah, let's talk about time. So okay. I was wondering if you could touch a little more, you kind of ended on it, but the balance between the letting go and the active using what we have to direct and steer. So, yeah, we, I have, um... I have talked, uh, the last talk I did, I did a little bit about how you yourself is a collection of all of the experiences that you've had throughout the course of your entire life. Um, and you, because you have the agency in your life to choose the thoughts that you keep and the thoughts that you, you let go of, um, can choose the lightness and, and sever the connection to the baggage. Um, and that, like a, like a hot air balloon cutting, uh, cutting the sandbags off uh, as you want to ascend to the stratosphere, to the surface of time where, where infinity lies. Um, you have to do that by cutting off the heavy stuff. All right, we'll keep talking. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, um, announcements. Congratulations to Steve Miller for winning the guitar raffle. We raised $590 for the YOU Fund, and another big thank you to Richard Sigler for making and donating the guitar. Join us Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., excluding holidays, for silent sunrise, and feel the power of collective prayer. Stay a few minutes or two hours if you wish. The Board of Trustees meets Monday, uh, May 15th at 6 p.m. Guests are welcome at 6.30. By request at our Congressional Vision Inn, Amy Burnett will be leading a meditation service on Thursday, May 18th at 6.30 p.m. The 915 New Thought World Religion class for the rest of May will be everything, all, everywhere, all at one time, taught by Gregory. Gregory. Open to all adults and you can attend on any Sunday. We are collecting new and gently used tennis shoes in the blue box in the foyer. Our goal is 100 pairs and it's starting to fill up. Sue will be teaching the Christ starting May 24th. The class will meet for five weeks. This is for the licensed Unity teacher track. The cost is $10 for credit and also suggested as a love offering for non-credit participants. This is an in-person class only. Pride is June 10th. We would like to have a big presence at the parade. We encourage anyone who would like to walk with us to order a Unity Pride t-shirt. The order form is in the foyer, and shirts must be ordered and paid for by May 24th. And that's what, 9 in the morning? Uh, the march I'm, this year is at 10.45. At 10.45. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and the shirts are 15 And the shirts are $15.